Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today it's all about image transfers. And this is something I have been looking for an answer for for a very long time because I love the look of image transfers, but I'm impatient and I don't want to wait. And I want something that's easy. I don't want to spend all that time rubbing the paper off the back of something. And I want something that's going to work mixed media style. And I finally found something that does that. What you're seeing here is one of my early experiments to see if this stuff would work the way I wanted. This is the last step in the process where you lift away the transfer film, leaving behind whatever image you have. And for me, in this case, it was a whole bunch of fancy script writing. Now I've tested out these image transfers on a whole bunch of different surfaces. What you're seeing here is one of my experiments to see how it would work on a very painted, very mixed media type canvas. And it definitely works there. I've done it on fabric, I've done it on metal, I've done it on book text, on plain paper, on painted papers, on gel prints, basically any surface that I would be using, this stuff will transfer an image to. So what is this stuff that I'm using? It's by a company called Engade, and it's their transfer film and then their transfer solution. And using those two things makes these image transfers happen. So what's the full process for how to do this? What do you need to know to get started? Well, that's why I've made this video. So if you're interested in learning how these image transfers work, I've got everything you need to know to get started here in this video. I'm going to show you the entire process from start to finish. We're going to mix up the transfer solution together. You're going to see me make some image transfers here, and you're going to see how to get the amount of transfer solution just so what I call the Goldilocks amount, not too much, not too little, but right in the middle. And you're also going to see the difference between the kind of inkjet printers that are used to make the transfer film. So this is all waiting for you here in this video. In order to do image transfers with this process, there are two key things you're going to need. One of them is whatever image you want to transfer, print it onto the transfer film. And then you're also going to need the transfer solution. And I'm going to start by showing you how to mix that up. You're going to need 91% isopropyl alcohol, basically rubbing alcohol, but it's really important that it's the 91%. And then you're going to add four ounces of that into your jar or container. Now I chose to use a ball jar here because I can put a lid on it tightly. You see, we're mixing rubbing alcohol in with this and that stuff evaporates. So that's why you want something with a lid so that it's not all going to evaporate while it's in there. And yeah, I'm measuring out four ounces here in this little glass, but I also could have used the side of the ball jar because it also measures out ounces on the side, but I didn't realize that until after I'd mixed this up. Now, once I've got my four ounces of the 91% alcohol in there, then it's time to add in the transferees concentrate. And what you want to do is put one tablespoon of it in there. And this little sort of shot glass measuring glass thing that I'm using, once I use it with art supplies like this, it is no longer food safe. So just keep that in mind with anything that you're using with this process. And of course, keep in mind that this is rubbing alcohol. So that is something that's flammable. So don't do this near an open flame. And of course, keep things well ventilated while you're doing it. Then simply put the lid on the jar and then you're going to mix things together. I like to do it simply by swishing things around inside the jar, making sure that everything is mixing together. Now it's not quite ready to use yet because it needs to thicken up, everything needs to bond, do all those things solutions do, and that'll take it three, four hours. And occasionally just give it a little stir during that time while it's all combining and turning into that magic transfer solution. Now you might be wondering how I'm classifying this as something that's fast if I have to wait three to four hours for the solution. Well, the reason why I consider it fast is because you only have to wait for it when you mix up the solution. Now, anytime I want to use it, I can open up that jar and I go in there and I don't have to wait. So you only have this three to four hour wait when you mix it up. After that, then it's good to go. And speaking of that, how long is it going to be good in one of those jars? Well, on the Inkade website, they say two to three days or something about like that. And what I found for me is I get over a month out of it. And so that way I can just reach in there, do my one or two that I want, and then back on the shelf it goes. So what is it that I'm doing that makes it last so long when I mix it up in a jar? Well, I don't know for sure, 
But my suspicion is it's because I like to keep the lid on it all the time. I am, as soon as I'm done using that brush, I try and get a lid on it so that none of that alcohol can evaporate. That's what I think allows it for me to last this long. Does that mean it's guaranteed for you? No, this is, this is one of those variable things. It's gonna depend on the weather, the climate where you're at, how much the lid is off, those kinds of things. But just know that on their website, it says it's good for two to three days, but I've gotten a whole lot longer out of it. Oh, and you might be wondering what it means or what it looks like when it's no longer good. If it ends up becoming very cloudy, then it's not gonna be good to use. And if it's clear, you are good to go with it. So whether it's two days, two weeks, a month, if that stuff is clear, you are good to go to make a transfer with it. The next thing you need to do is take whatever image, whatever thing you want to transfer and print it out onto one of the pieces, one of the sheets of transfer film. Now this stuff has a coating on one side and that is the side that you want to print on with your inkjet printer. You want to print on that coated side because that coating is what makes the magic with the transfer solution to make that image transfer happen. Well, after I was all done with this video, I actually had it edited and everything. I realized, hey, if you're thinking about trying image transfers, you might want something to print it out with, just to give it a try and see how you like it. So I put together a sheet of images for you. So if you're thinking about experimenting with image transfers, you've got something to start with. And I'll send that to you. I've got a link down below so you can have that sent directly to your inbox. So let's do one of these things. I'm gonna take this image of these three kids and I'm gonna transfer them onto this gel print that I've got here basically a piece of painted paper. As I'm spreading the transfer solution on, I'm purposely doing a larger area than the image because I wanna make sure that I've got an even amount over the entire area of where that image would be. So that's why I'll do a larger area. And then I simply position it where I want it and gently place it down. I'm using my hands to make sure there aren't any air bubbles trapped under there. And you can also use a brayer to do this. Now comes the absolute hardest part of this entire process for me, and that is waiting two minutes. And it's not that it's that long of a time, it's that I'm terrible about gauging time. So I have to remember to set the timer on my phone so I know when it's been about two minutes. And between you and me, whether it's two minutes, two and a half minutes, that's not a big deal. But you want it to be about two minutes so that you can lift that plastic up, that transfer film up, while it's still nice and juicy. Oh, and you might be wondering, how do you know how much of that transfer solution to put on there? Well, never fear, I got you covered. It's coming up later in the video for you, as well as some things to know about the printer and the types of inkjet printers. Yeah, it turns out there's more than one kind. That's all coming up for you. So now that it's been about two minutes, I'm ready to lift the transfer film up. And I'm gonna grab it at one corner and I'm gonna peel it backwards. It's not a straight lift up, but more of a peel off kind of thing. And it's also something that I do slowly and gently to allow it to release off of that transfer film. One of the things that I love about the InkAid image transfer process is how forgiving it is. Things don't have to be exact, perfect, and precise, and you can still get a great transfer. Kind of like with the time where it's about two minutes that you wait, if it's two and a half minutes, you're gonna be fine. If it's a minute and 50 seconds, you're gonna be fine. The same is true for how much of that transfer solution that you're putting on there. Because as I'm brushing it on, you have no way of knowing exactly how much that is. So I wanna show you a couple of experiments that I did using too much, too little, and just the right amount of transfer solution so you can see what it looks like so that when you're doing it, you'll know how much you need to use. I'm gonna start out by showing you what too little transfer solution looks like in your final transfer. So I'm just gonna very lightly, you can tell I'm not even covering the paper. This is obviously not gonna be enough if I'm not even covering the area. So purposely went too light here and I'm gonna put the image down on there. You can press it down using your hand gently or a very light rolling of a brayer over it like what I did there. And then set the timer for two minutes. Two minutes are now up, so I'm gonna lift up that transfer film and you're gonna see not a whole lot of this is transferring. That happened because it was just way too dry. I didn't have enough of that transfer solution on there so that it could make the transfer. But that's what too little looks like. What does too much look like? I'm very intentionally going to be very generous with how much of that transfer solution that I put on there. Purposely putting lots and lots of it on there. And notice how as I'm putting it on, it kind of discolors the paper just a little bit. That's simply from the paper getting wet. 
Once the alcohol evaporates, it will go back to looking the way it was. This stuff is completely clear when it's dry. So I've got a puddle going on there. I've got lots of it happening there, way more than what I need. And so now I'm going to push that image in. And you want to do it really gently, whether it's with a brayer or with your hand. Very, very light touch is especially important when you've got a lot of that transfer solution. Because everything gets a little bit slippery, things move around. If I pull on that transfer film, I can actually distort the image just a little bit. And watch what happens when I push down with my finger on the image. When I'm using a bunch of pressure there, you can see how I'm distorting it. I'm making marks in it. And those marks show up a lot more easily if you've got way too much of that transfer solution on there. That said, it's also kind of fun to play with and intentionally move some things around. So if you like having that distorted kind of, I don't know, melting kind of look, this is a great way to get that to happen. I'm going to set the timer for two minutes so I know when to come back and lift up that transfer film. And I'm also going to mess around with this a little bit because I really like that sort of squished paint kind of look to it. By simply using your fingernail, a little bit of pressure, you can slide that ink around when you've got a generous amount of that transfer solution under there. Well, now the two minutes are up, so I am going to pick one corner here and I'm going to gently and slowly peel it back. And when you've got a lot of transfer solution, I found it actually transfers fairly decently. The biggest drawback to a lot of it is that you have to be careful about things moving around or getting too mushy or sliding. But in terms of actually getting the transfer, too much works pretty well. So now let's talk about what I call the Goldilocks amount. The not too much, not too little, that nice middle spot where you get those great transfers. And what this means is you want to put enough of that transfer solution on there that you cover the surface. You got to be able to do that. And you need to have enough on there that it's juicy when you lift up the transfer film but not so much that you've got puddles or things are slipping and sliding. And even when you've got that Goldilocks amount of transfer solution, you still want to very gently push that transfer down. That's why I use the brayer because sometimes with my hands, I can use a little more pressure than what I realize. But even with the right amount, that Goldilocks amount, you still want to do that gently so that you don't smear or move any of that ink around like what you saw me doing when I had way too much of the solution. So yep, there's the timer. I'm going to wait two minutes and then I'm going to lift this up. Now, like everything at art, there's more than one way to do it. And the important thing is you find the one that's comfortable for you to do. You can peel off that transfer film just using your hand, or you can have something help you out, say like a pencil or the end of a paintbrush, like what I'm using here. When you're doing your very first inkate image transfers, there are a couple of things that I encourage you to do so that you can get a feel for how these work and get great transfers. And the first thing is to use an absorbent surface. So this paper that I'm using, cardstock, it's absorbent. Book text, papers, anything like that. The other thing is to start with a smaller image transfer before you do a bigger one. Another thing that can help you out when you're giving these a try is that Inkade has a sample size. So you don't have to start out with the big bottle. You can get the sample kit that has this bottle of it. And I believe it's six transfer film sheets so that you can test this process out with your inkjet printer and the way you like to create. And I mentioned test it out with your inkjet printer because it turns out there's more than one kind of inkjet printer. I had no idea until I got into this that there was more than one kind of ink in an inkjet printer. Turns out there's dye and pigment ink that can be inside your printer. And some printers actually have both. Some have only one. And how do you know what your printer is? Well, one of the ways is good old Google. Type in the name of your printer, the model number, and say, does it use pigment ink? And the internet will let you know. Now, your printer may have all dye-based ink, it may have all pigment ink, or it could have some dye, some pigment. And I wondered how big a deal this was. I mean, I know they said it was a big deal, but was it? So I had to do a few tests side by side that I've got for you here. So these may look like they're the same thing, but they're really not. It's the same image, but it was printed on two different inkjet printers. So one of these is all pigment-based ink. The other one is a mixture of dye and pigment. I started searching among friends to see who had what and if I could borrow their printer to do this test for you. And so the one that I found a friend of mine let me use, it has pigment black ink in it 
and dye based color, which is why I chose this image because it's all color. So you can see what a dye based ink looks like compared to a pigment ink. Once I've got these on here, I'm going to wait two minutes and then I'm going to come back and lift that transfer film up. The first one I'm going to lift, it is all pigment ink in that one. And I should have put a little bit more of the transfer solution on there because it was a little dry right around the edges. That's why it's not completely transferring there, but that has nothing to do with whether or not it's pigment or dye ink. That has to do with me not having quite enough of the solution around those edges. But that's what pigment ink looks like, and that's what everything you've seen up to now in this video, everything has been pigment ink. Now this one you're going to see here, this one is dye based ink. And as I lift that transfer film up, you're going to notice that some of the color is staying on the transfer film. The image still transferred, but yet some of the dye is still there. So that's the first clue that things aren't quite the same. The other thing that I noticed with this is the image smeared somewhat. So there is some scribble writing inside that hot pink on this image. And the one on the left, you can still see the detail for it. But over here on the right, it is absolutely blurry and smeared and basically the details gone from it. Well, I wondered if this would happen every time. So I decided to do this again using a different image. Now, same printers, the one on the left that was done in an all pigment ink print printer. And then the one on the right was done in the printer that had the dye ink in color and then the black is pigment. But well, we have no black in this. So this is looking to me like it's going to be mostly dye ink. And in the last one, we had a lot of pink that stayed on to the transfer film when I lifted it up on the dye base. So I was expecting that to happen again. And I was also expecting the detail of sort of this, of especially in the blue, that sort of loose writing that's in there, those lines, I expected those to be completely blurry. Well, now that I've got these on here, I waited two minutes and then I came back and I was surprised by what happened. This first one that I'm going to lift up, this one didn't surprise me. This is the one that was printed on an inkjet printer that had all pigment based ink, the kind of ink that works best with these image transfers. And that one went as I expected. It was the next one that was a bit of a surprise because I expected, especially in the light blue, dark blue area, that stripe where I have those details, I expected those to just completely be blurry on the dye based one. I also ran into a little bit of a challenge on this one. As I was lifting it up, I realized it wasn't transferring as completely as what I expected. So rather than keep pulling it there, I'm going to try it from the other side. See if that can maybe save part of it. And it saves some of it, but not all of it. So I had that piece of it missing there. But more importantly, the dye based one, it has all sorts of detail to it that I didn't expect to be there. I expected a lot more blurriness in that one, like the one I just did. My takeaway from the pigment versus dye ink experiment here is that dye based ink is very unpredictable. Things aren't quite as crisp and clear with it, and you're not exactly, well, sure what you're going to get compared to with a pigment ink. So that said, do you have to use pigment ink? Could you use any inkjet printer for this and get a great image transfer? Quite possibly. And you won't know until you try it with your printer to know for sure in the kinds of images that you like to do. And that's why I think it's so great that Inkade has that sample size so you can buy the sample kit and test it out with your printer and see how it works for you. Now, I know this has been a long video, but I wanted to get all this information in for you here. So if you were thinking about doing the Inkade image transfer process, you would have all the key information so you could decide if it's something you want to dive into. And if you found this helpful, if you've enjoyed this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos about image transfer and all the other things that I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new video out. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.